high. So for this one, it says the perpetuity provides for continuous payments. The innovative payment at time t is this. Okay, using an effective rate of 6%, present value at time zero of this is x. Calculate x. Okay, so this whole uh, framework that is given here represents one perpetuity that is equal to x, right? So they're giving us some time limits for each of these payments. For one, let's start for this one because this one starts from zero to 10. So this, so payments of one are occurring first, right? So the way to think of this is, we also know that the annual effective rate is 6%. So for the first uh, present value perpetuity, we know that the first payment consists of, if we were to, it doesn't say it's a perpetuity due, it just says that there's payments of one starting at time one. So what I do is I know that payments of one are discounted back one and so on and so forth, even for year two when payments of one are discounted back two and so on, uh, up until the point that it just ends at nine not 10 or anything because it says that t is is equal to zero so it starts from zero but it just ends before 10 because it's less than 10 right so now we know that the last uh scenario over here is just discounting back to b to the nine. so these represent all payments now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to set up since this isn't exactly a perpetuity since it's ending at somewhere at time nine. We can't use the first term over one minus common ratio. We are gonna have to use the sum of a geometric uh, progression formula because we are able to actually find the sum of this uh, geometric progression. So we have to know that the sum of geometric progression is um is uh a times t to the n minus one over t minus one or at least that's how i remember it um I just know that A is usually denoted as the first term. Uh, the T's are denoted as the common ratios and N represents the number of terms that we're dealing with. So now I'm gonna write out my um, equation for the first perpetuity, so it's gonna be one over 1.06 time one plus one over, squared all the way until it goes to 1.06 to the ninth, right? Now, the first thing is, we can look towards the first term that's occurring. So it would be one over 1.06. Then it goes to the common ratio. Uh, clearly our common ratio is one over 1.06. including zero, right? There are 10, there are a total of 10 num terms, right? 10, uh, this time period, uh, minus one, right? This memory part, over common ratio again of one over 1.06 minus one, right? Now let's solve for this perpetuity, even though it's not really perpetuity. 
Um, we're gonna do 1.06 to the negative 10 minus one times uh, 1.06 to the negative one, which is negative point one. Point four one six six zero eight seven zero one divided by one point zero six to the negative one. Oh wait, I know, I'm just gonna keep my numbers from the tops because my calculator's not big enough. It's just gonna be one point zero six to the negative ten. It's gonna be point five 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 minus one k. Times one divided by one point zero six. So it's going to be negative point four one okay, over minus one. Okay, so it's going to be negative point zero five six. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna solve both of these. So give me that. Okay, so it's gonna be so this whole thing is gonna equal seven point three six. At least that's what I got for the first part of using the sum of geometric progression. Remember, it's always the first term times ratio, common ratio to the number of time periods minus one over common ratio minus one, right? Now we're gonna go on to the second part. The second one's pretty interesting. I'm gonna take out my eraser so I could easily erase. Yeah. Erase all of this. Right. So for this one, it says for uh, terms uh, ten and greater. Right. So now this doesn't end anywhere. So this is definitely a true perpetuity. So that means that we can use first term over one minus common ratio in this case. Right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna notice that um, we're gonna notice that from so it's greater okay so it's ten starting from ten right then it doesn't say that's a do or anything like that so we're assuming that payments of 1.03 to the t minus 10 are going to start at time 11. So what does that mean exactly? That means that at 1.03 occurring at time 11, 11 minus 10, payments of 1.03 is going to occur at time 11, right? So that means at time 12, what is 12 minus 10? Uh, so payments of 1.03 to the 2 are going to occur and so on and so forth. Now, uh, it's a perpetuity and we're going to have, it's occurring at time 11, so we're going to discount it by 11 years. Same for the term right afterwards. Right. Um, now, another thing is, is that we are also going to have to um, since this whole uh, thing is within a whole entire perpetuity at time 10, it must also be discounted by b to the 10. Now, we see that our series will be looking like something like v to the 10 plus um, 1.03 to the times v to the 11 plus uh, 1.03 squared v to the 12 and so on and so forth, right? 
Now, uh, for this type of thing, we are able to use first term minus one minus common ratio because it's not ending anywhere. We can't use the sum of geometric regression like we did before. So we notice here that the first term is going to be v to the 10, right? Over one minus common ratio. What is the common ratio in this case? It is practically 1.03. Let me see, let's compare. This would cross out, so this would cross. Uh, it's going to be 1.03 to the uh, B, right? Because if I were to take this squared it as well over 1.03 to the v to the 11, right? Take this out, this would just be one exponent. Take this out, this would just be one So it would just be 1.03 to the v. Now let's solve this, right? So I'm gonna take my 6% effective, right? I'm gonna do to the negative 10th power. I'm gonna get uh, 0.55 three nine four the second part is also one minus one point zero three divided by one point zero six which is gonna be point zero two eight three zero now I'm gonna divide both so I'm gonna be point five five eight Three nine four divided by point zero two eight three zero. So I'm gonna get nineteen point seventy three for the second geometric progression, right? So now, once I find both values, now I'm able to find the present value at time t equals zero, which is denoted x. So that means that I'm gonna add both of these, right? So I'm going to get 19.73 plus 7.36. And then I'm going to end up getting 27.09 as the final answer, which would be closest to choice A.